What the hell time. is this? What are you guys hey. doing? Hi. All right, so we met about a year ago, and you told me you were going to do the most insane pickup truck, not only in Vegas, but around the world. <laughs> so it's a Model Y mixed with a truck. So let's review the whole project and how you guys came up with the ID. Well, I like the look of an old classic truck, and I really love the modern Tesla. It's what I drive on a daily basis. So I'm like, let's just put them together. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you do that? <laughs> oh dear, this is going to be complicated. So as you can see, just by the look of this one, it's going to take a little bit of work. It's a lot of engineering, a lot of fabricating, getting things to fit together, work properly, communicate with the computer. So it's a fun project for All sure. Right. What did you start with? Which year uh, truck is this? How did you even source a truck yeah. like this? So I wanted an old, old truck, and I also wanted something unique. So what we did is we chose a Ford F100 1962 unibody truck. All right. They only made the unibody for three years, so we want that's somewhat unique. Meaning the bed is one piece with the shell. The whole the thing is one piece, yeah, yep. With the cap. All right, so that makes them quite unique and rare, aren't they? Yes. So do you think people will be quite upset that you decided to just chop one into I, bits? Or? I think they're upset on both ends. <laughs> <laughs> the F100 crowd's probably upset we're doing an EV conversion, and the Tesla's crowd is probably upset we're destroying an EV to make a truck. <laughs> so we're probably upsetting both sides All of the right. people. But who cares? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of the Model Y you, you are using, it was a damaged Model Y, so it's not like you bought a brand new Model Y to just cut Correct. It, it was a, a 2021 long-range Model Y salvaged. So no one could do anything with it outside you know gather the parts to make something fun and exciting with all those bits so right it was damaged enough that it was insuranced out so okay. we we used it for the project speaking of which what parts are you actually using because it doesn't seem like there's a lot left from the model y so let's review all the parts you'll be actually using oh wow okay so we have the the front and rear motors yes we have the battery we've got uh ac seats computer cameras uh, anything that we could fit or fabricate to fit the truck will be using. As much as the mechanicals and electronics from the Model Y as possible, but as little on the structural part of things. You're building a one-off chassis for it. You're building something quite exciting. Actually, you're making this a right and drive truck <laughs> in Vegas. It doesn't make any sense. Hey, if you're going to build from the ground up, you might as well do everything you can, right? Well, absolutely. I mean, it would have been fun to do a center steer, but then you would just be one person. So yeah, that's going to be quite nice. So let's walk around the whole truck. So obviously you have the front axle, if we want to call it an axle, it's the front motor. The Model Y being a long range. Uh, long range dual motor. Yeah, but you've got the seats and the center console, the dashboard will be used again. We're trying not to do just the normal EV conversion of just batteries, motor, and a BMS from something else. Yeah, yeah. We wanted the truck to think it's a Tesla in every aspect, charge the same, update the same, the screen's the same. But when you look at the truck, we want you to look at it and go, what am I looking at? It looks <laughs> like an old hot rod truck, but I don't know anything else. We want it to be very high-end, luxury, classic. You can take it anywhere to any show and, and be able to show off what you did. The suspension, everything you will be redoing. Can you tell us more about the suspension you're going to use? So the suspension, we're gonna take away the five point individual arms on the suspension and we're gonna go upper and lower control arms all the way around. All right. Custom spindles will be made for it. And then we wanna do a air over hydraulic cantilever system. <laughs> so again, we don't want anything to be easy or simple, right? So make it as hard on ourselves as All possible right. and, and get something unique and very, very display worthy in the back. So you're not new to the display world. You've done trucks, uh, Model X's and stuff like that. Where does your passion for cars come from? And how did you transfer from a like, big V8, big trucks? to electrics and Teslas, because you built a Model Y two years ago. That was Correct. fantastic also. Because stock's boring. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's, be, let's be honest, ever since we could drive at 16 year old, you don't want to drive just the normal vehicle. So you always did a little something, a little stereo. You added something that was unique to your own to call it your own. So I think that's probably where it started. Been in the mini truck world for a long time. We've owned lifted trucks. We have diesels, electro, um, EVs. So we're not partial to one side or the other. It's not all Petro or all EV. We like them both, we enjoy them both, we appreciate them both. As long as it's fun, yeah. it is, yeah. yeah. Um, let's check out the, the battery pack because you managed to keep it in one piece. However, you're building the chassis all Correct. around the pack. Yep, so we're building the chassis now. We're building the frame rails right now. They're what they call Lego built. So they're individual plates that will be welded together 
in such a way that it'll increase the strength and rigidity of the frame to hold the battery so the battery does not move just like in a Model Y. All right, so you get a much stiffer pickup truck than it right. ever was. Okay. We, we want this thing to lay on the ground and turn sideways like a race car. Can you tell us a bit more about the, the finish for, say, the bodywork, the interior, and the wheels? She picked a very nice color, uh, a very old school color. This can be very classic. It should last the, the test of time. The interior will look very luxury, Ferrari cream mm. interior. Uh, we wanted to have you look inside and think, this is a hot rod truck. We don't want you to think it's an electric truck. Okay. but it'll have the electric components to it. Are you almost trying to hide the fact it's electric? Almost. Oh, okay. We want people to look at it and go, oh, that's a that's very a nice sick 62 yeah. <laughs> F100, but I don't hear it. Yeah, There's yeah. nothing coming out of it. What, what's going on here? And when she pops the hood, they'll be like, oh, wait, where'd the motor go? Why do you have a motor in the back? Why is this? And so that's what we are going for. All right, did you consider adding like uh, audio systems that would make like a big V8 diesel uh, sound? Or we didn't want to get too corny where people start <laughs> being like, oh, now so you're you know trying what? to fake it. Yeah. But For the longest time, I really didn't like it, but I'm starting to understand why people want the rumble from right. the, the V8. So, well, uh, she's going to have a very nice stereo system uh, in there. Yeah. So if we want that V8 sound, she can definitely produce that sound out of it. So, so Kelly, could you tell us what we will find under the hood? Is it going to be just an opening, open space? Or will it be a display system for the audio? Well, he's very creative. And we really want it to be that classic truck feel still. So you, you, you expect to see a motor when you uh -huh. open up that engine bay. We're going to do the best we can to synthesize a look from the components from the air suspension. So using compressors, using the tanks, lay it out in a way to make it look like an engine. Good. Well, I look forward to seeing this, but um, where do you think this takes the car culture or the truck culture in Las Vegas, but in the U.S. in general? Is it something you expect more people will be looking into? Or is it just going to be like a one-off because you just wanted to build it? Ah, that's a hard one to say. I think it, it, it takes a special person to go away from the old V8s, mm -hmm. superchargers, turbos, things like that, because there's you can't get around that sound. Everybody loves the sound. I love the sound. Um, but when you're talking technology, pure power, pure torque, it, it, it's hard to beat an EV, truly. If you've ever ridden in a Plaid, you know that feeling, and it just puts yourself in the back of the seat, and you can't get away from it. You can't describe it to somebody. Yeah. And so to be able to have that in one of these, I think more people will do EV ones. Um, I guess it just depends on how they do it. Speaking of which, was it challenging to find the right partners to build something like this? It is, because I think most people are scared. Okay. Um, I think they're scared to go into a world they don't know. Like you know, there's enough people doing EV conversions now, and there's enough companies out there now, and enough people have done it now that I think that we have the uh, access to certain people that will help us get over certain humps that we may come across. So going back to making this truck think it is a Tesla, because it identifies as a Tesla. <laughs> Um, are you going to use, uh, say, like the full self-driving capability of the car using the cameras and then the sensor to, say, open the doors and stuff like that? We, we want to use, like I said before, we want to use everything. So for down here, we want to use the little triangle camera. It has it right there. We want to be able to use the sensor for the card somewhere right here. Um, we want to be able to have it so that the uh, cruise control works the way it should. If it has self-park, we want to be able to self-park it. <laughs> we want to come to a show, have her air it up, walk over there and have it summon and come to her in the truck yeah. and nobody's in it and then see what people think. And the air suspension you can probably uh, use from your phone? Yep, okay. Bluetooth, yeah. you can use it all and <laughs> air it up and have it come to pick you up and, and then the have it lay back out. So yeah, that's gonna be fantastic. So. All right, so yeah, I understand it's a long journey for you guys, but we all look forward to seeing it completed. Maybe cruise down uh, Las Vegas Boulevard in a year <laughs> or two. Just wonder what will be next for you guys once this is done. Are you already thinking about the next project, maybe EV or not? Well, I haven't thought about the next project because this one's so big and, and takes up so much of the time that it, it's this one and then we'll worry about what's next because in a couple years like you said technology may be different where who knows what's going to be around all right guys thank you so much guys we'll see you in the next one